Welcome to the Workology podcast, where we discuss the science and art of the workplace, gain powerful insights, resources, and perspectives on the industries of human resources and recruiting. Join your host, Jessica Miller Merrill, chief blogger of bloggingforjobs.com, for a 45 minute in depth and no holes barred look into the future of our most powerful business asset, the employee. And now, here's your host, Jessica, with this episode of Workology. Hello, and welcome to the Workology podcast. It's great to have you on this podcast here and part of the Blogging for Jobs and Recruiters Lounge blog family. My name is Jessica Miller Merrill, and today my guest is Caleb Fullhart. Caleb is one of the smartest guys I know. He also works in HR technology. I first met Caleb a couple years ago, but we really hit it off earlier this year at South by Southwest and spent most of the week totally geeking out about how big data and recruiting can integrate. So, uh, Caleb, talk a little bit about you and, and your background. How did you get into working in uh, human resources and recruiting technology? Sure, sure. I don't know if I'm a uh, nerd turned recruiter or recruiter turned nerd, but uh, either way, um, I've been in the industry about um, 15 years, um, coming through uh, agency recruiting for a while, uh, and then management, and then uh, consulting, recruiting, and, and lastly, probably the last five years working on the uh, tech side of uh, recruiting and, and HR. Um, I guess the uh, you know the best way to describe what I do is uh, companies are having problems with their HR tech. I I go in and figure out what's wrong with them and and solution it to fix it so it works the way they need it to. Yeah, and, and I, that's a really important job I think, especially when you when you think about how many pieces of HR technology uh, a person has or a company has that um, don't always talk or, or work well with one another. Yep, exactly. So today's topic is how to successfully integrate your HR technology. Um, as we were talking about, Caleb has worked in HR tech for a really long time. He's integrated and implemented HR technology, working with a number of different systems and softwares, many of them that you would be familiar with. And he's worked in a number of different roles, most recently with Bizarre Voice and uh, now starting over again, uh, a second tour over at SAP. Yep. So I'm really excited about our podcast today uh, because Caleb is involved in a project with me that um, is called HR Tech Guide. It's a new resource available on Blogging for Jobs, and I'm thinking of it as the trip advisor for HR Tech. And Caleb's going to be one of our featured experts in talking about integration selection and how uh, to make sure that you are purchasing or working with the right HR technology um, and helping us in HR and recruiting do our jobs better. It's no secret that HR technology is big business. For those of us who have been working in the space, a lot of times when I'm talking to people and explaining to them what I do and, and the industry that I work in, they're really surprised when I tell them that by 2015, it's estimated that HR technology will be an $8.1 billion industry. HR tech is big business, and it's extremely important as HR moves forward from an administrative role to being involved in the strategic business decisions and important planning that happens all around the human capital, which employees are the number one and most important business asset, but they're also the number one business expense at an organization. So having the right technology that integrates and talks to one another and works together allows HR and recruiters to step away from behind the desk and focus less on administration and process with tech and talk more about how can we plan better and hire better, faster and smarter, which uh, really you know, impacts the, the overall business and, and the bottom line. So the first question I want to throw out to Caleb today is what exactly is HR technology integration? What does it mean and, and what does that look like? Yeah, so I would say, I mean, you have, if you take the, um, the bucket of, of what falls under HR technology, it, it's, there's a lot of uh, different systems um, out there for different components. You know, you have, um, you know, I did one project. They had, you know, one, co uh, one product was their um, employee management system. They had a, a different one for payroll and finance. 
a different one for learning and development, a different one for their applicant tracking system, and then a different one for their onboarding. So if you look at, I guess, how I would define the integration is taking any of those um, software uh, systems that they use that deal with any aspect of the employment uh, or employee um, experience uh, or management of them. Um, you know, some other ones would be, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Performance management, um, you, you know, benefits, um, you know, how all of those things uh, can be tied together. And the integration piece of it is not um, just how does a spreadsheet look so it's easier to do data entry into it. A true integration is making it so that you don't need human interaction to manage the transfer of information between those different systems. So information transfer, is that so I'm not logging into multiple systems at the same time or so like reports can talk to one another so stuff just kind of flows from one system to the other? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's you know, in an unintegrated system, you'd have, uh, you know, an example would be uh, in some of the smaller companies that I've worked with, they've done when, you know, the recruiter hires a person in the applicant tracking system, they send an email to, you know, payroll, they send an email to onboarding, and they send an email to, um, you know, their employee management system. Um, and then that person takes all the information or each of those people takes the information and then does the data entry into each one of those systems. Um, that's what an unintegration, unintegrated uh, HR system would look like. It's a lot of manual data entry. Um, and the biggest issue with that is human error. And that's a big issue when you're dealing with, you know, em you know employee compliance, people's paychecks, uh, benefits. Um, you mess that up, it tends to cause a lot of issues. Well, well yeah, and, and I would say that, that I've experienced some of those issues before. In my last corporate HR job, we had a, uh, and I'm not going to name the software, because it's not necessarily always the software's fault. Sometimes integration doesn't happen because a company um, doesn't want to spend the, the funds or understand why it's important. And um, once I pushed somebody through the applicant tracking system, I had to fill out a report or a form to send to the centralized HR call center where they would enter the person into our HRIS system before we could even begin to request uh, user IDs and login information or get them in the system to begin work. Yep. And, and terminating was the same way. I had to fill out a form, um, send that off um, after I terminated them, in, them into the HRIS because uh, COBRA and things like that weren't yet tr triggering to make sure that we were in compliance and people got documentation mailed to their homes um, f for, you know, continuation of benefits and things like that. So why does product selection matter when we're talking about the scope of HR technology integration? Don't all HR technology products integrate together? Uh, no, <laughs> although they may say that they do. Um, you know, I, I think when you're going... I should, here's where the hang, here's where I found a lot of the hangups um, uh, happen, um, or I should say the issues that happen with companies when they want to integrate, you know, their HR, um, you know, their HR systems together. Most companies will say, "Yeah, we can be integrated." The question becomes, "Is okay? How are they integratable? Like, what are what is the process in which they integrate?" and not a lot of companies will ask that question because a lot of the people in the selection of an HR tech um, uh, tool is HR. They're not the 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 tech side of the business. You know, in a lot of cases, the HR systems are owned by you know people and talent, or, or you know the HR talent acquisition um, uh, silo within a business with little crossover to technology. And so you have companies telling, you know, selling, you know, the chief people officer, or chief HR guy, um, and, and maybe an analyst saying, yeah, this is the, the software. This is, you know, it's totally can integrate with all these different programs. But when you actually get down to it, it's how that integration works. And if it's a true integration, and what I mean by a true integration is it's not just a, a, some will say they're integratable because they can push a report out and then so there's no manual entry on their side. 
well, there's still manual entry into the other software, so it's not a really a true integration. When I look at a true integration, it should be a seamless process where on a particular trigger that happens, let's say a candidate is hired in their applicant tracking system, that will automatically pull all of the relevant information and push it to the other systems that care or, or that need that information, and it's automatically loaded. Um, so when you look at the different types of integrations, you know, or, or when you're going through that product selection and you ask, you know, how are they integrating, you know, are they using web services, you know, are they using an XML feed that gets pushed out and the other one pulls it. Um, for the products to be integrated, one needs to be able to push out in a format that the other one can pull. Um, and if that, if those two things aren't happening, it's not going to be a true integration and it causes a lot of headaches. Um, usually after the check is written and they're going through the implementation or post implementation. So what kind of questions does HR need to ask that sales team or, or when those, they are in those conversations or, or are there questions that, that we can find out to see if they actually are integrated uh, correctly? Yeah, I would ask, you know, I'd have, when you're looking to add to or replace you know, a particular tool in your, um, you know, your tool set, your HR systems tool set, know all the other systems that are affecting it. Um, you know, whether it's payroll, whether it's, you know, onboarding, um, you know, learning and development, have that with you. And when you're in those conversations, ask them for how they've integrated with those different systems in the past. Um, you know, how was it done? You know, have them, even if they have a case study or, or ask them, for references at a company where they've done that integration. So you can kind of get a, uh, an idea of how much uh, manpower is going to be needed to actually make that integration happen as well. For instance, there's some integrations that I've done that are actually pretty simple. You could do them in less than a week. Um, you know, uh, I did one which was Workday and uh, Cornerstone uh, on demand where anytime a new employee completed their uh, training, it would automatically load into their employee file on Workday. And it was something where they had what they call their core connect. So they were standard integrations where you basically filled in the information into Workday, you filled in the information into Cornerstone, you tied the connector, you did a test, and then it worked. Um, other integrations are very, very um, meticulous and manual where you're not working off of a template, you're working off of a, a, a mapping chart, if you will, like this is the report that's coming out and this is where this field and this report needs to go in this other system. And, and it could be the difference of, you know, your integration costing, you know, $1,000 or your integration costing you $100,000, depending on, you know, how much manpower is needed and how easy it is to integrate. Do you think that com companies should consider maybe native product suites where they're they're all designed and developed together as one uh, versus maybe companies who have went and acquired multiple products together. Is integration easier if, if they're all um, built together without any, um, any acquisitions in play? Um, if a company has bought, you know, acquired different systems and brought them into a similar platform, um, they can definitely, they're probably going to be a lot easier to integrate if they're not already built integrations within um, you know, your vendor company. Um, it's obviously gonna be more beneficial for sales in a vendor company if all the products already work together. Because they could just say, hey, all you have to do is plug this in and it automatically works. The issue with a lot of companies um, in, in going that route is, you know, you take a company that was, did really, really well because they had a great human capital management system, right? They had a great HCM system. Then they go out and buy an applicant tracking system. And they're like, oh, this is you know, part of our, our toolbox. You can get with us you know, all, all in one. They all work the same. The problem is, is what makes a good HCM system doesn't make for a good applicant tracking system because they have two very different functionalities in the employment process. So uh, unless it was wholly developed by people that were applicant tracking experts, and working with the HCM experts, and then they work on the integration together, you're gonna find that you're probably gonna have a poor quality. Uh, one of the systems isn't gonna be great. 
Um, and the bigger and the more, you know, the more uh, companies buy and acquire, it becomes very homogenous. They try to find a standard, you know, oh, this is the way we're going to do it because it's cheaper that way. Then you can move developers around and you can move, you know, your your analysts around to work on any product as needed, but the products don't have the same functionality. And that's why you have, um, you know, you go to HR tech and you'll see four or five different learning and development companies. You know, you'll see four or five different applicant tracking system companies. You'll see four or five different HCMs. If there was one great system that did all of those together, you know, they'd, they'd rule the market. The problem is, is it's, there's such a, uh, a difference in what they need to deliver that a, a my personal opinion, you know, a one-stop shop is great for like a Walmart, but it, it's, if you want the best, you're going to go to a specialty store. I like that. I like that example because I, there, there's so, there's so many companies out there. There's, you know, we have the large sort of enterprise systems that have lots of moving parts. And of course the, the, the sell point with them is that it's already a unified system. They all talk to one another. If you've also purchased um, different components like expenses or planning, or maybe you have a call center and things are integrated. They're all talking to one another and, and, or the marketing platform. So all these things are tied together and you're able to share data and information. Um, but unfortunately, what if you're needing uh, a service or a, a specialty product or something that's just really awesome, um, yep. that is outside of that scope of that company? Yep. And, you know, it needs to be scalable. You know, you need to have, you know, there's a lot of great niche tools, but if your company, um, as you're looking at different systems, you want to be mindful of where your company is going the next three to five years, um, because you want to make sure it's scalable to your needs, because you don't want to have to go through the, you know, the capital cost of doing another configuration and implementation and integration with your systems. So be very forward looking um, when you're doing that assessment. So let's say that I'm a VP of HR at maybe a mid-sized organization, and I'm, I'm looking to add some new systems. Maybe it's sourcing software, or um, maybe I, I'm, I'm looking at maybe a video interviewing platform uh, to my existing HR technology. What should my bit, biggest concerns be or most important questions when I'm sitting down and talking with the companies that I've identified as com that I want to, I want to consider uh, for these new softwares. Yeah. So I would say the, the most important work you could do would be before you ever sit down with the vendors and have a very clearly defined business process plan or business process. There's some technologies, you know, whether it be applicant tracking system or HCM, they have their clearly defined workflows. They have how they think the business should should for, should follow a process, right? Where a lot of mistakes have been made in the selection process and, and you know, in implementation process is those business processes that the company that's purchasing from a vendor, they don't realize or, or don't understand the, the impact it has if the system won't follow their workflows. So instead of having a system following what you do, you have to basically retrain your whole team to follow the workflows of that system. So I think unless they're, um, the system should be configurable enough, especially from a workflows perspective. Um, and the greatest impact is, you know, on the applicant tracking system. Um, you know, what are the stages that each candidate goes through? Um, you know, one company, you know, you have the, you have, let's see, you know, they're an application. And this is important, I think, also from a um, OFCCP compliance perspective as well, because of, you know, the different triggers and tracking mechanisms that they have to report on. Um, you know, is this person an applicant, right? This is the workflow. From an applicant workflow, what do they do now? You know, is it a, is it a recruiter screen uh, or a recruiter overview, you know, assessment, and then it goes to the screen, you know, then how many interviews do they have? Do they have one interview and then they bring them on site? Do they have, you know, a recruiter interview, you know, a technical interview, and then they bring them on site? Those different types of scenarios, especially from a reporting structure, you need to make sure that that system works within your current process. Um, otherwise, you're going to have a lot of complaints and your user adoption is going to go really, really low. It's going to make for lots of headaches uh, for VPHR to, you know, the managers of the different teams. 
Yeah, or you're going to have to be creating a, a training plan to be able to retrain all the people that this new process workflow is going to be impacting. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of them, I, I'll say the more mature systems are customizable, you know, to certain degrees, um, you know, especially a lot of the software as a service ones, the cloud-based ones, you can usually, you know, manage that, but having that information on your process before you sit down at the table will give you a lot of negotiating power as well, because you will know what you need that system to do from a technology standpoint, not just a process standpoint. I, I've learned that there's not a lot of HR or techie, um, you know, database guys, girls that have the HR knowledge that understand the business of talent acquisition and human resource management. And there's not a lot of technology people that understand the verse. So you, you don't have HR people, in my experience, are not necessarily the most technical people. There's, a, I should say, a lot of them are technical, but they're not back-end database, you know, understanding the difference between a object-oriented database and, and any, you know, relational, relational databases um, and what they mean for the business. On the other side, a lot of the tech people don't understand the nature of the HR business and talent acquisition base business. So there's kind of that disconnect that makes it really difficult to get the whole, you have to be very diligent in understanding what you need it to accomplish walking in the door. I mean, I would recommend that you have a, you know, you're going through a vendor assessment and you're a mid-sized company, have, you know, a recruiting leader in there, have somebody from your IT team in there that understands you know, databases and how they all work together and then have somebody from, you know, from the high end business side that understands, you know, obviously the finances and the end goals. And that way you're going to have a very, have more of a 360 view on your selection process, if that makes sense. I, I, and I think you're right on, like you need to have the different players in the room to be able to talk through the concerns or what their life is like as, as far as every day. Um, yeah. and, and having IT in the conversation is extremely important uh you know they're kind of the keepers of, of the technology at the organization it's funny though is a lot of the hr systems don't sit under it they sit under hr because they it, hr is the one who purchases them and and is the owner of them you know it is generally and this has just been my experience and probably you know uh, more often than not it doesn't manage the system you know, an applicant tracking system admin is usually like the recruiting manager that just know it's the person on the team that knows the system the best. It's not necessarily a, a database administrator within the company. I think it's important to, to try to work with IT or operations or whoever that might be. I, yeah. I can say that in my last role, I remember it was towards the end of my tenure there and um, I had been pulling this report and it was taking me 25 minutes or more in, in our um, HRES system to be able to pull it through Crystal Reports. And uh, lo and behold, I find out through, you know, a series of a lunch meeting that I had with our, our head of operations for our facility that they their analysts pull that report every week as part of other things. Yeah. So a simple, a simple lunch meeting, you know, where we... I expressed my frustration with the these softwares and, and the reporting taking so long. I find out that they have all that information stored on a share drive and have had it available, uh, you know, in, in my two and a half years there. Yeah, it, it's staying close to building that friendship and the relationship with, with an IT team will help you, uh, you know, your internal tech team will help you immensely in avoiding pitfalls. Well, what do you think about all, I mean... It, I, I love HR tech. There's a lot of innovation happening. There's a lot of new companies sprouting up. And being in uh, Silicon Valley this last year, I, I felt like there was a new one um, that I was learning about or, or seeing at a show or at a happy hour uh, nearly every week. What kind of concerns or questions do you think that HR folks need to have when they're looking at, and, and I'm not saying that all new startups are, are bad, um, there are definitely some really amazing ones, but in terms of integration, what things are really important when you're sitting down with a, maybe a cool new startup, they only have maybe less than 12 customers, 
um, you are a, a larger entity, what kind of questions should we be sitting down and asking about integration specifically? Yeah, in regards to the integrations, I think it would tie into, um, you know, the same ones that you would do with companies that are, are, you know, a little bit farther down the maturity model. How do they integrate? You know, what's, um, you know, what is the actual process and where have they done it? You know, there's a lot of, of companies that like to say that they, you know, oh, yeah, we can integrate with this and that. But when you get down to it, they've never done it. it, it and it's it's one of those things that's easier said than done, which is where I, usually where a lot of my work comes in is when, you know, they've been at an integration for three to six months and they just can't seem to get it to work. And I'll go in and, and really when you start digging in, um, you know, the the database integration doesn't happen on the user side. It happens on the back end of the database. And that's, uh, I think, one of the confusing things. It's not a, a simple, let's just point this you know, this little thing here to this little thing there. It, it's it's literally managing um, a process within the database. I think I love startups. I, I will demo pretty much anything <laughs> that comes out in the HR tech field because it's really cool to see what a lot of these companies are doing. Before you get into the integration, I would really assess, you know, is it a long-term fix for something that's broken? Is Does it do it... You know, the, the, the Delta model is, you know, does it do it faster, does it do it quicker, or does it do it cheaper, or faster, better, cheaper, right? Those are the three things that pull each other. If it's not necessarily solving one of those things for you, do a demo on it. Maybe you just like it better, you know, and, it, and it's easier to accept. But before you go and do a full integration, I would definitely, you know, do a three-month assessment of it. Do a three-month demo. See it, you know, have, get a... Um, a group of people that would be the users and have them, you know, have it run simultaneously around your current system before you invest in, you know, fully flip over to it. I'd also say that I think it's safe in this case to assume, especially with the really new startups to assume that they have never integrated with uh, maybe your other systems. And if, if they do insist that they have, um, ask them to talk to someone, a company or a contact at, at an organization who's recently went through their integration uh, process and installation so that you know for sure. Yeah, exactly. Get those references. Um, the no find people that have done it. Um, that's probably the biggest thing, you know, that, that has had that experience because, like I said, you can, integrations can be a wonderful thing that are short, sweet, and, and solves a lot of headache and saves a lot of uh, man hours on data entry and, and data errors. If done improperly, it's a nightmare. Or done, you know, just as quickly as you possibly can without thoroughly testing it and making sure it works, it, it causes a lot of issues. So it's kind of a balancing act. You mentioned the OFCCP earlier, and, and I'll just also say in working with a lot of the, the startups in the space and, and demoing their products and taking a look, that many of them don't understand or are aware of uh, government laws or record-keeping requirements uh, and, and have any knowledge about the OFCCP and how maybe something like that would work. Yeah, that's true with a lot of the talent communities. You know, that's where it gets tricky when implementing those uh, types of software where you're attracting talent that you're not necessarily looking to employ and you have to be OFCCP compliant. Um, you know, where when you're reporting on those things, because you need to report on it for, um, you know, for compliance sake, is at what point are you defining a person as an applicant and then how are you treating them once they're defined? And that's something that if not clearly defined or loosely defined can get you into a lot of trouble. And then you lose your government contracts, which is a huge impact on a lot of companies. It was probably about, I would say, four years ago when video interviewing was just kind of coming on the scene. And I remember talking to a couple different video interviewing startups and um, asking them as part of the demo about record keeping and retention. And they had no knowledge of, of those requirements um, and yeah. didn't fully understand. So um, I, I would just caution, like it, they, I love startups, but you need to, you need to ask some serious questions and, and it get referrals um, um, yeah. from people who have, have went through the process of integration and, and uh, you know, can speak to 
their professionalism and, and how they've gotten the job done. Yeah, and most startups go through, you know, the, you know, when the startups that I've worked through, worked with, they go through a process. You know, they have four companies that are their beta testers or their alpha testers. Ask to talk to them. You know, find out because those are the people that saw the raw product and have helped evolve to its current state, you know, based on their feedback and, and just, you know, have an open and honest conversation with them. And those are typically going to be peers of, you know, the person who's assessing, assessing the vendor. Good point. I, I want to I move over and transition a little bit. This is Jessica Miller-Merrill coming to you live from the Workology podcast. I have Caleb Fullhart here, and, and we're talking about human resources technology integration. And I want to talk a little bit about some buzzwords that I've been hearing a lot in the space. I, I just got back from a vendor conference, and um, there was lots of talk about cloud technology. It seems to be really hot right now. Um, especially when you're talking about HR tech, but really all types of tech, it's all in the cloud. Yep. Can, can you tell us, Caleb, what the difference between on-premise software is and cloud-based HR software? Sure. So on-premise pre on is going to be uh, a software package that is on a server that you maintain. It sits, it's physically on a computer in, you know, a, a, fro you know, a chilled server room, uh, in your office somewhere or a data center somewhere. So it's something where it's uh, loaded on um, and then you, you own it. Um, it becomes a part of your uh, wholly owned software systems, um, you know, kind of like the old mainframe computers. It's something where all of the information is stored physically on premise. Cloud is more of the software as a service where you log in uh, via a browser um, to your specific domain, um, but all of the data is stored on the vendor's uh, system and servers. Does anybody still sell on-premise services? I'm sure they do, but I'm not aware of. I'm not aware of them. I mean, there's been. I, I think the you know the software as a service or cloud-based. Um, you know, software has been around and people are comfortable with it enough where that uh, they don't want to pay for the infrastructure to house on-premise software. Well, and, and that and then having all the different like versions of software and, and having go, to go through updates is really kind of a pain, especially when uh, you are providing support as, as a software company or, you know, to upgrade to, to that different version. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's, you know, some companies go through, you know, a three month refresh and updates of their system, um, you know, on a cloud based one, they're, they're included, um, you know, on an on premise one, those typically aren't, you got to go out and buy the new software, buy the new update. So uh, let's, let's maybe have an example here. Um, let's just say I'm a new client uh, working with you, Caleb, and I'm looking to integrate maybe some existing HR tech with some new software services. Um, how would you work with me to integrate all these different types of tech? Let's just say um, I have a, um, I don't know, a, a payroll ATS uh, sort of suite of products, and I'm looking at maybe adding video interviewing and um, maybe some sourcing technology and maybe an onboarding platform. What, what, would, um, what would you advise um, me um, and as, as someone who's maybe – attending like the HR technology conference or looking to demo new products, where should they begin? Sure. I would start with, before you look at any tools, def have it clearly defined what you're looking to accomplish. What, what, what's the problem you're trying to solve? You know, is it, you know, we just, we need a video, you know, we need a video um, interviewing tool or we need a video interviewing tool for something specific. Um, you know, what is your current onboarding process and, and how are you looking for um, a, a technology tool to assist in it? You know, is it just because it takes too many man hours to do it the way that you do? Or is it there's so many things that could be automated, you know, from, uh, you know, the pre onboarding to first day paperwork? Um, having that defined is going to weed out a lot of it's going to save you a lot of time in talking to the right people, not just talking to everybody. You know, if you have a top three 
things you want the tool to do um, in each of those areas, write those questions down. And then if you're going, you know, at an HR tech um, and you're going around to each of the booths, ask those questions. You know, how does your tool deal with, you know, let's say video interviewing an OFCCP? And do you have any information about it? So when you're going into the information gathering piece, you know what information is really important to your specific needs instead of um, what will happen is, is, you know, the, you know, somebody will be like, oh, I was at HR tech and this really cool tool does really cool stuff and, you know, so on and so forth without having any, you know, clearly defined what it means to that company. And, and I think that's, an, that's important because if you go into an HR tech, it's, it can be very overwhelming. Um, you know, there's a lot of information, there's a lot of vendors there, um, and it's typically managed by, you know, the startups as a founder and a salesperson, you know, a salesperson is interested in, in the sales, um, and, and wants to give you, um, you know, exactly what you're looking for. So having that defined before you step into that environment is going to help, like I said, just save you a lot of time and get you the information that's important to you instead of just the, you know, the talking sheet on what's important to the vendor. And when you're looking at the integration piece of it, that's really where you say, how do you integrate with other companies? And I would say the easiest, the most effective way is from a backend exchange of information, whether it's in an XML format or a CSV format, and it's going out to a secure server on a regular basis or in real time. And then the tool, uh, you know, the other program can accept those files going out to the secure server. That I found is probably the most effective um, in, in way of doing an integration um, with the higher, with the highest accessibility rate. So it's not breaking on a regular basis. That would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Simpler the integration, the, the higher availability rate it's going to have. When it becomes very complex to, you know, to integrate, like let's say you have to go through two different systems that are converting data over to get it to go into the one system, the more steps in the process, the it's it, it just has a higher error rate because something can go wrong on so many different levels, if that makes sense. Is there a one particular like type of product that you're seeing um, a lot of innovation or I guess maybe you're the most excited about uh, to kind of switch away from integration, but just tech in general? I think there's a lot of fun and I use the word fun because I'm kind of a geek. There's a lot of innovation with wearable technology and how to integrate it within, you know, talent acquisition. How do you get to the person where they are? Um, there's a lot of new sourcing tools that have come, you know, to light probably the last three years. And those seem to get a lot of um, attention. Um, you know, the data around potential candidates is growing, you know, exponentially. Um, the amount of, I mean, just if we're talking big data around people, I think it doubles every 18 months or 19 months, something like that. And harnessing that uh, responsibly for talent acquisition is really cool to see. And the same thing with, you know, human uh, capital management. Um, you know, there was a company I demoed called Orca Eyes, which was a, um, they have a software which is predictive analytics for performance, you know, and, and your employees. So really seeing what, potentially your employees have based on previous performance and what's happening within your company to give you insights as to, you know, um, you know, this person could use a little bit more attention. You know, they, they, they're a high potential individual. They just need the right resources available to them. So I think the, the big data and how it's applied within, you know, talent acquisition and HCM is, is really fun and sourcing too. Well, that's kind of where you and I tend to geek out, like the big data piece and just all the different information and, and things that you can learn that you otherwise wouldn't uh, without having those small, you know, billions of pieces of small bits of data. Yep. Well, I, wanted to, I want to thank you, Kayla, for joining us today on the Workology podcast. Where can people find you and learn more about you and what you do? Uh, yeah, you can go to, well, I'm on LinkedIn, Caleb Fullhart, F-U-L-L-H-A-R-T. Um, Twitter is C-J Fullhart. And then uh, the company I work with is Strio Consulting, S-T-R-I-O 
Consulting.com. Thank you, Caleb. And, and thanks for joining you guys here at the Workology podcast hosted by me, Jessica Miller Merrill, where we discuss the science and art of the workplace, HR and recruitment. And until next time, we'll see you here. Thanks, Jessica. Production services for the Workology podcast provided by Total Picture Media.